Okay, this is section 3.3, three, the homework, the voiceover dealing with parabolas, vertex, maximums, and minimums, axis of symmetry, and so forth. All right, so the first one, he gives me a graph here, and he says, hey, um, use the graph to find a vertex, axis of symmetry, maximum, minimum. Well, the parabola opens upward, so this is a minimum point, a low point. As you see, it's labeled here negative 3, uh, positive 2, all right? The axis of symmetry would go right through x equals negative 3. Notice the axis of symmetry's equation is nothing more than the x value of the uh, vertex, all right? And obviously, it's a minimum. The minimum value is the y value. So when x is negative 3, the y value is 2. That's the minimum value right here. Letter A. All right, these I've got to do out, so let me get started. Number two, he's asking me to find the vertex. So we get f of x equal to 4x squared minus 32x plus 59. Now remember, f of x and y are synonymous. They're one and the same, so... How do I calculate the vertex? The vertex is given to me as the opposite of b over minus b over 2a, comma, f of minus b over 2a. Simply stated, once I find the x value of the vertex, I take that and I put it back into the function, I find the y value. All right, f of x and y are one and the same. So what's my a value? There's my a value is 4, and my b value is a minus 32. So, the opposite of b, the opposite of a minus 32, minus b over twice a, twice 4. So, what do we get here? 32, 2 times 4 is 8. 32 divided by 8 is 4. Now, <laughs> as I look at these... You know, it's been the same thing right along. Sometimes you don't have to finish off the problem. I've got a um, an x value for my vertex as being positive 4. But as I scan these, I only see one that has an x value of positive 4. Let us see. Now, I could put the 4 back into the function and find that this is negative 5. And I'll just show you real quick, not that I have to do this. Because there's only one that had the correct x value. So it's, let's see, 4 times x squared, x is negative, I'm sorry, positive 4. So it's 4 times 4 squared minus 32 times 4 plus 59. 4 squared, what is that, 16? 4 times 16 is 64 minus... 128 plus 59, 59 and 64, would that be 13, 123 minus 100 and, uh, minus 128, you see the difference here is a minus 5, and you see, but we didn't have to do all that, there was only one answer that had the correct x value for the vertex, it was 4, so I was all done, didn't have to do all that, but we did it anyways, just to show you. So, sometimes working smarter, not harder, does pay off. Number three. F of x equal to minus 2x squared plus 12x minus 22. So... I'm looking for the opposite of b over 2a and then f of this. So let me just find out what the x value is. So I need my a. My a is my minus 2 and my b value is 12. So the opposite of b. If b is 12, the opposite of b is minus 12 twice a. If a is 2, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Signs are the same. My quotient is positive. So, as I look at this once again, there's only one that has the correct of x value of the vertex. I'm done. All right. I could take the 3, put it back in here just to have it tell me, the equation tell me that, you know, the uh, y value of my vertex is negative 4. But why do that? I'm done. 3B. Moving on.
Number four. Let's see if I get this. Number four. What do we got? F of x equal to x squared minus 20x plus 102. So my A value is 1, understood 1, and my B value is minus 20. I'm looking for a minus B over 2A, the X value of my vertex. So the opposite of B, the opposite of a minus 20 is a positive 20. Uh, twice A, if A is 1, then twice 1 is 2. 20 divided by 2, that's 10. So I'm looking for an answer that has an X value of 10. Well, I see it right here. All right, let us see. Once again, I could take that 10, put it back into, find f of 10, put it back into this function, and then all it would have given me is uh, a y value of 2. But, hey, why do that when there was only one that had the correct x value? Why waste time? Working smarter, not harder. Number 5, f of x equal to minus 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. I'm looking for the opposite of b over 2a. So my a value is minus 2 and my b value is a positive 3. So the opposite of b, the opposite of 3 is a minus 3. Divided by twice a, if a is a minus 2, twice minus 2 times a minus 2 is a minus 4. Signs are the same, quotient is positive. So I'm looking for a um, answer that has the x value of three quarters for number five, and that's obviously letter C. Here again, I could have put this back into the function just to have it tell me 17 eighths, but there was only, he's, he's nice to us. He's, he gives us only one answer so far that, you know, we're done here. Letter 5C. There's only one that had the correct three quarters. So we'll take it. Number six, h of x equal to one half x squared minus four x minus three halves. I'm looking for the opposite of b divided by twice a. My a value is a fraction of one half. My b value is negative four. I see it right here. So. The opposite of B, the opposite of minus 4 is positive 4. Twice A, if A is 1 half, tw twice 1 half is 1. 4 divided by 1, well that's 4. Now here's a case where uh, he gives me a 4 there and a 4 there, so i got to go back and find F of, uh, F of 4 here. i got to find what F of 4 is. So... Well, it's not f of 4, it's actually h of 4. That's what the function is. It's called h. So, uh, h of 4. So, in place of x, I'm going to substitute in 4. I'm going to square it. Minus 4 times in place of x. I'm putting in 4 and I'm adding 1. Let's see. 1 half of 4 squared. Well, that's 16. This is a minus 16 plus 1. Half of 16 is 8. Minus 16 plus 1. 8 and 1 is 9. Minus 16. That's a minus... What did you do here, Mr. Uh, let's see. What are we... This is number 6. And we're getting some crazy answers, so what's happening here? Do we copy the problem right? One half of x minus four x minus three halves. Oh, yeah. Sure helps if we copy the problem right. All right, so this is minus four x minus three halves. All right, minus three halves. All right, half of eight. Half of 16 is 8, minus 16, and then minus 3 halves. So 8 minus 16, what's that, a negative 8? And I've got a, uh, a minus 3 halves. So combining a negative 8 with a minus 3 halves is a minus 8 and 3 halves. 
and expressing this as a fraction. 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. Uh, plus... Do, 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 do. What's a negative? Well, I'll put it this way. Let me do it this way. 2 times 8 is 16, plus 3 more is 19 halves. Negative. All right, negative, whatever this is, 2 eighths of 16 plus 3 more is 19. 19 halves. And what are we still doing wrong here, Mr. Gomes? What are we still doing wrong? It's a Saturday and we're not thinking right here. 1 half of 4 squared minus 4 times 4 minus 3 halves. 4 squared is 16. Half of 16 is 8. A minus 4 times a positive 4 is 16. All right, and then minus 3 halves. So I got a negative and a negative. So that's a negative 8 and 3 halves. Uh, 2 times 6 is 16 plus 3 is 19. And what is this? 8 and 3 halves. 19 halves. Oh, jeez. The answer's been staring me right in the face over here. Alright, it's been staring me in the face. 19 halves, alright. Thinking I was wrong, and no, I wasn't. I was right. Minus 19 halves. Okay. 2 8 to 16, 3 more 19. So it was there all the time. Just didn't see it. Number seven. He's asking me to find the equation of the axis of symmetry. Well, the equation of axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry goes through the x value of the vertex. All right, so if I find the x value of the vertex, my axis of symmetry is x equal that. It's a vertical line. So number seven, we've got f of x equal to x squared minus 2x plus 9. I need the x value of my vertex. How do I get that? Minus b over 2a. So my a value is understood to be 1. My b value is a minus 2. So I want the opposite of b. Opposite of a minus 2 is a positive 2 over twice a. If a is 1, twice 1 is 2. So we've got 1. So my equation of axis of symmetry is x is equal to 1. It's the x value, all right, of the vertex. All right, x is equal to 1. Vertical line, letter b, number 7. All right, numbers 8, 9, 10, 11. He's asking me for the exact same thing as far as what he wants. He wants the equation of the axis of symmetry. Notice it's always x equals something. It's a vertical line. So number 8, f of x equal to a negative 3x squared plus 12x. I'm looking for minus b over 2a. Or my equation is going to be this, all right, axis of symmetry, goes right through the x value of the vertex, so my a value is minus 3, my b value is 12, I want the opposite of b, the opposite of 12 is minus 12, divided by twice a, if a is negative 3, twice a negative 3 is a negative 6, signs are the same, so my quotient is positive, x equals 2, and then we see it, letter C, all right, x equal 2, all right, vertical line, number 9, this function is defined as g of x, all right, you can use any letter to define the function, f is used quite often, g and h and so forth. So my equation of axis of symmetry is x is equal to minus b over 2a. It's the x value of the vertex. So my a value is 4. My b value is minus 32. So the opposite of b, the opposite of a minus 32 is a positive 32 over twice a. If a is 4, twice 4 is 8. 32 divided by 8 is 4. My equation is x is equal to 4. Where have I got that? Letter D. 
Number nine, letter D. Number ten, f of x equal to a negative 2x squared minus 8x minus 13. My equation will be x is equal to minus b over 2a. a is minus 2, b is minus 8, the opposite of b, the opposite of a minus 8 is a positive 8. Uh, divided by twice a. If a is negative 2, twice negative 2 is negative 4. So I get 8 divided by negative 4. That's negative 2. x equal to negative 2. And we see it here, number 10. Let us see. Number 11. f of x equal to minus 2x squared again plus 13x plus 1 my equation of axis is symmetry minus b over 2a a is negative 2 b is 13 the opposite of b the opposite of 13 a positive 13 is a minus 13 divided by twice a if a is negative 2 twice negative 2 is negative 4 Signs of the same quotient is positive, so my equation of axis is symmetry, x equals 13 fourths, and I see it here, number 11, letter B. Alright, here he's asking me whether I've got a max or a min, and then he wants me to find that value of that maximum or min. Well, the value of the max on min is the y value. So first, we've got to solve for the x value of the vertex. Put that back into the function. Find f of that. That will give me my y value. That is the max or min. But here's the deal. We can cut to the chase here. This is understood to be a positive 1. All right. So if you have a positive value, your parabola... If I have a positive A value, my parabola is going to open upward. So I'm, my vertex is going to be a minimum point. A minimum point. So for number 12, I know it's not going to be a max because my parabola, my A value of my, just determine if that's a positive, my parabola opens upward. If this A value here, the coefficient of the square term was negative, it would open downward. And you would have a maximum point. So I'm looking for a min here. So it's either going to be C or D. So what do we got here? i got to find the Y value after I find the uh, Y value of the vertex. So my function is F of X, number 12. F of X equals X squared minus 4X plus 9. I'm looking for minus B over 2A, comma, F of minus b over 2a. All right, I'm looking for this value right here, f of, I gotta find minus b over 2a first. So my a value is one and my b value is negative four. Notice I don't need to know my c value at all. It doesn't play any part. So minus b over 2a, all right, minus b over 2a. The opposite of a minus four is a positive four. If a is one twice one is two. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So what I want to do now, I want to find f of 2. All right, f of 2. The minimum point is the y value. So I know the x value is 2. I just need to know the y value. So in that place of x, I'm going to substitute in 2. 2 squared is 4, minus 8 plus 9, 4 and 9 is 13, 13 minus 8 is 5. Alright, so my point is 2, 5, but this is the what's considered to be the actual minimum value. It's the y value All right, of the vertex. So, number 12, letter D. So, we have to do the whole thing here. we got to find the... Um, Basically, what we're doing, we're finding a vertex and just giving them the y value of the vertex. Uh, number 13, here again, I notice that my a value is a negative, which means this parabola opens downward. So if it opens downward, I've got a maximum point. 
Alright, so it's not going to be B, it's not going to be A, it's going to be either C or D. So already I'm down to a 50-50 shot. Like, you know, we can do these times many times. We can cross out two particular answers that don't make any sense. So minus B over 2A. Let's see, my A value is negative 1, my B value is negative 6. The opposite of B. The opposite of a negative 6 is a positive 6 over twice a. Twice negative 1 is negative 2. So 6 divided by negative 2 is a minus 3. Alright, so now I need to know the y value or f of minus 3. f of minus 3. So it's negative minus 3 squared minus 6 times minus 3 minus 10. Minus 3 squared is 9, a minus from forever 9 is a minus 9, signs are the same, positive 18, minus 10, minus 9, minus 10 is a minus 19, plus 18, and we get a negative 1, negative 1, letter 13, our favorite letter C, there it is, negative 1, negative 1. It's the y value of the vertex, but well, we got to find the x value first. All right, what's well, the same idea? Well, no, this is 14. 14, this is understood to be a positive 1. So if it's a positive, that means that this parabola opens upward. All right? If it was negative, it opened down. Upward means like this. So you've got a minimum value, a min, a low point. So it can't be A, and it can't be letter C. It's not going to be B or D. So, ah. Uh, Number 14, if I got enough space here, I guess I do, 14. X squared, f of x, equal to x squared plus 10x plus 18, minus b over 2a. What is a? a is on the positive 1, and my b value is 10. The opposite of b, the opposite of 10 is a minus 10. Divided by twice a, if a is 1, then twice 1 is 2. Negative 10 divided by 2 is a negative 5. So I got a negative 5, and I don't know what this y value is just yet. So I'm going to find f of negative 5. In place of x, I'm going to substitute negative 5. I got to square it, plus 10 times negative 5. Plus 18, negative 5 squared is 25. 5 times that is a minus 50. Plus 18, 25 and 18, what is that? 33, 43, minus 50. Signs are unlike, difference is 7. Take the sign of the larger, minus 7. Number 14, letter B, minus 7, minus 7. And number 15, once again, we got a negative sign, so this parabola opens downward, which means this vertex is a high point, a maximum. It's not this one. These are all maxes, so, all right. He's getting a little tough on us. He wants us to, whatever. Minus 2x squared plus 5x. Plus 8, so I want to find minus b over 2a. a is a negative 2, b is 5. So the opposites, the opposite of b would be the opposite of 5, which is a negative 5 over twice, twice a. If a is negative 2, twice that is negative 4. Signs are the same, so my quotient is positive, positive 5 fourths. Minus b over 2a, minus b. Okay, so let's find f of 5 fourths. Minus 2 times 5 fourths squared plus 5 times 5 fourths plus 8. 5 fourths squared is what? 25 over 16 plus 25 over 4. And what I want to do here is, I know I want to get a common denominator here of 16, it looks like. Um, 
Yeah, so I know 8 is this 8 times 16. What's that? 48, 128 over 16. 8 times 6, 48. 8 times 1, yeah, 128 over 16. Negative 2 times this would be a negative 50 over 16. I can rename 25. Let's see. I, I need a common denominator of 16. So if I multiply this by 4, I get 16. 4 times 25, that would give me 100 plus 128 over 16. What I've accomplished here is I get everything over a common denominator. So I get a minus 50 plus 100 plus 128. Hmm. So what is this? Minus 50 and 100 is 50. 50 plus 128 is 178 over 16. Now, as I look at this, number 15, I don't see this answer. But, all right, but I do see answers that have a denominator of 8. Suspiciously, 8 goes into, uh, sorry, 8 goes into 16 evenly. If I divide 16 by 2, I get 8. And if I take 178 and divide it by 2, uh, this would be 60, no, no, it would be 80, 80, 89. 89. Yeah, that looks better. 89. I could better make it better than that. All right, so taking 178 over 16, reducing this down to lowest terms, dividing both numerator and denominator by 2, I end up with 89 over 8. Dividing that by 2, I get 8. Dividing that by 2, I get 89. And suspiciously, here it is. There's your 89 over 8. So he made us some, you know, he made me work at this one. He made us, you know, work with fractions, finding common denominators. But, hey, that's the nature of the beast. It's, it's math. All right, common denominators. Fractions. Everybody loves fractions. Not really. All right. So let me see. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create another video. I'm going to use my um, my graphing calculator to do this. Um, what he wants me to do, you know, the way. He, this is set up. He wants me to calculate the vertex of each of these and then find a graph that has the vertex that I solve for. But you get the graphing calculator. I mean, you know, just this graph it and see what the picture looks like. I mean, that would be, you know, that would be the easiest way. If I'm telling you to rent a calculator, let's use the, you know, let's use the technology. Why uh, make life tough for ourselves? So I'll do a separate video.